Hey everyone, it's Mark Wiens. I'm in Chichi Castenango. One of the biggest indigenous markets in all of Central America. And today, I'm gonna take you on an ultimate food tour throughout this incredible, vibrant, energetic Mayan market. Very good, really crispy. Mm. The chicharron is one of the most packed sections of the entire market. Hey everyone, hope you're having an amazing day. It's Mark Wiens and we have just arrived to Chichi Castenango. Or also locally named, known as shortened to Chichi. But this is uh, one of the biggest indigenous markets in all of Guatemala and all of Central America and it happens two days per week. It's a colorful, vibrant, just flea market of everything that you can imagine. And so along with just about everything you can imagine to buy, this is also a cultural gathering of traditional Mayan culture. And then the other great thing about any market is not only the shopping, but it attracts so many people that you'll find a lot of food pre-cooked to eat as well. And people come to gather to socialize. We're gonna eat some of the local food. We're gonna see some of the sights, the vibrant colors, the Mayan culture. And I'm gonna share it all with you coming up right now in this video. People here, I speak, uh, and not speak Spanish, I speak Mayan language. Okay. In my language, the name is Mayan Kiche. And my language, Kiche, this is Otsap. Otsapitik Ubral. Otsapitikubral. Ubral. Okay. That means. Namlakibal Ubral. Welcome in the local Mayan. It's a long market local here. Language, okay. So it only happens two days per week. No, it's just two days per week. Okay. Yeah, but this is Sunday, and today is the last people here. Okay. The market is a common uh, local people here. Next, you come in every part of Guatemala, the city here. Oh yeah, nice. It's getting getting busy. You see the beautiful colors. Color here. This is the favorite color. This is the red and the pink color. Okay, we're going up. Many, many, I mean, outside lanes, narrow alleys, passages, ways, I mean, to, to navigate. You'll get lost within the market. It's a maze. But we're stepping into this indoor area um, where we can get a view downstairs of some of the vegetable market. Oh, beautiful. You can see all the vegetables of the area. Mostly tomatoes. Yeah, so this view is absolutely incredible. All the vegetable vendors selling the local, the local harvest from the mountains that they grow, that they probably grow themselves. Things that are, I mean, mandatory, that are just essential in the Guatemalan diet. What's interesting about this is it's kind of like a community center. I mean, they even have a, it's actually a gym floor. You can, you can see the basketball courts, the basketball nets on either side. Uh, when it's not a market. Oh, I can smell it. The pork. Oh, okay. So it's fried, fried pork. Oh, you can smell the aroma of that. Just crispy pork. Hola. Uh, chicharron, so fried pork. You can see the bubbly, crispy skin. We've got to taste this. Oh, it's a... You can feel the heat radiating off of it too. There's no doubt that the chicharron is one of the most packed sections of the entire market. But also it's kind of like at the doorway of the entrance of the market. I will try, try the carnitas that is... That is... Um, it's uh, pork meat. Okay. Fried pork meat with chiles. Those ones. 
Okay, so we got the cheetah on. So would you normally eat this with tortillas or just with straight? With tortillas and a little bit of salt. But even straight is fine. Even straight is okay. fine. And you just have to, up. you you know how good it is by how you break it. You see how it crunches? Yeah. That you know it's a good chicharron. Okay, great. Yeah. Here we go. I'm gonna try the chicharron. You love chicharron? Mm, yeah, <laughs> it's crunchy. It's good. Here we go, my first time for a Guatemalan chicharron. Don't break your teeth, they say. Oh, yeah. Wow, that is so thick and crispy. Skin, fat, pig. That's like the real flavor of pig right there. And that is just the straight up like really crispy. Really. Like that type of crackling that's like shattering glass in your in your mouth. So sharp. Really tasty. Really fresh too. Okay, and then we also got some other carnitas, which is fried pork. They have some jalapenos in there. They have some onions in there as well that she served us. So this is carnitas, um, and it, carnitas are prepared pork, which is uh, boiled, which is simmered in its own fat. And so it retains the flavor. It keeps the moistness. Now this is a whole piece of meat. Oh, green onions in there as well. Mm. Mm hmm Oh, wow, yeah. Salty, tender, just moist from being boiled in its own fat. Oh man, you taste the flavor of, of, of like sweet onions in there. The jalapenos, the green onions. Oh, it's so tasty. Mm. Mm. Now I know why so many people are ordering that. Thank you. I'll try that jalapeno. Oh, sweet. Oh, put some of that pork oil. Very good. Oh, look at all this fresh produce, all the plantains, oranges. And then next stall is all fabrics, beautiful colors, more fruits. Bananas. All the different bananas we have. Each one has a different flavor. You mm, used to mm. one flavor mostly, but one, each one of these bananas has its own taste. As I mentioned previously, this is the biggest flea market, indigenous market in all of Guatemala and actually in all of Central America. And just, it truly is an overdose of colors, the busyness, the energy. It's really, really fascinating. The pork. Oh, the blue jeans section. Hola, hola. Yeah, look at those radishes. Those radishes are huge, like the size of oranges. Roberto is leading us now through the market, through these, I mean, it's just a, a maze, a labyrinth of a market, but he's leading us to the, some of the famous pre-cooked food stalls. You could smell the smoke in the air. And we're going to one of the most legendary comedor, one of the favorite comedors, eating places within the market. We're already starting to see fried chicken, grilled things, tortillas are everywhere. Oh yeah, we're in for something tasty coming soon. What is this place known for? Which here I take them the food local here. Okay. Uh, fried chicken. Okay. Fish chicken. You have soup for chicken. All right. Yeah. Oh, this is good. She's making a fresh batch of the, the fried chicken. Nice. You can see there's some kind of a red marinade on it. Maybe some achiote as well to give it that red, deep red color. Then it goes into just a, a dusting of flour, then directly into that oil where it slow cooks, kettle fried over a, a bed of fire here. The clap, the handmade tortilla making in Guatemala will just never get old. I mean, they just taste so good when it's that fresh masa, when they pat it out by hand into the 
very remarkably circular shapes, you're guaranteed fresh tortillas, as I've been mentioning throughout this entire tour of Guatemala. They have a few different meals that you can order here. A lot of people come here for the soup de gallina. I think it's a hen soup, which is one of their most popular dishes, but then they also have fried chicken. That's also a very popular. A lot of people get the fried chicken plate. They also have a fried fish plate. So we're gonna try a little bit of each, and this is just vibrant, colorful, energetic, and they're cooking everything right here at the front in the market. chicken soup there. You can see how thick, how rich that is, all those green onions in there. Oh, hello down there. Oh, oh, there come the fresh tortillas. Gracias. I had to try two different dishes. One is, again, the caldo de gallina. This is a soup made with the hens, served with rice, served with vegetables on the side, served with avocado, yes. And then the other thing that I could not resist that a lot of people order here is the fried chicken. And fried chicken is actually something that's very important, very popular in Guatemala. And, and it, the, the soup is simmered down. Look at how thick and rich it is. Green onions in here. Oh, there's pasta. There's even pasta on the bottom. Nice. That broth looks incredible. Mm -hmm. mm. Yes, it's the best way to... It's here, the local people here, you have party, you have different uh, celebration. Uh, yes. People here, you want your food, uh -huh. the, the chicken, the, the soup, the chicken. This is one of the most important dishes. Important okay. Yeah. Simple, but it's really like flavorful. Yeah. Really like chickeny thick. And you can tell that, I mean, it's a dish that could be cooked for a lot of people. It stretches the flavor of the chicken in that broth. And I mean, we are in a high elevation on the top of the mountains here in Guatemala. And this is just straight up what you want to be eating in a high elevation situation when it's cold. This soup is just straight up soothing. Mm. Love the flavor of those green onions just simmer down until they melt in your mouth. Also, we have two different types of tortillas here. This one is a, more of a white, white corn. This is a yellow? Yeah. Yellow corn? Yeah. Okay. Oh, again, you cannot underestimate the quality of tortillas in, in Guatemala. They're always good. You can take some of these vegetables, carrots, avocado, avocado, squa uh, chayote, I think, and even put some of the Use rice the in. Guatemalan spoon. Yes, mm -hmm. and then some of the avocado. So what you can do with this is take a bite. Mm. 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 Oh, the avocado is amazing. So creamy. Going in for the fried chicken. Oh, oh, you can tell how crispy that's going to be. That is a, that's a beautiful piece of fried chicken. Mm. It's so crispy. Again, it's kettle fried, shallow fried. I mean, it might even be fried in fat. Because that's just so flavorful. Yes, yes, really good. Yeah, really crispy. Not a, maybe just a light flour coating rather than a heavy batter. Eat with that tomato, tomato sauce. Mm. <laughs> kind of like a sweet tomato sauce. Almost bueno. like a homemade version of ketchup. Mm. And then they have, whoa, look at the size of this spoon. And then this is the, the pickled jalapenos, yes. Yes, yes, yes. This is something we need. Got some of these pickled jalapenos. I love the simplicity of it. And I think 
in order to get that broth, they boil all of these vegetables with the chicken in the soup, and then they pull them out. So, I mean, that gives the, the stock, the broth, such a natural sweetness to it along with the chicken. Mm. Try some of this hen. Mm. Oh, it's so tender. Oh, and it's just been absorbed by that broth. You can just feel the, I mean, that's like natural, the texture, not, yeah, that's good chicken. No, no. One of the great things about an avocado when it's perfectly ripe in Guatemala, the skin just completely peels back. Mm. Oh, it's so sweet. The avocados are incredible. This is like, I think potatoes, carrots, green beans in here. Wow. That is heavy on the mayonnaise. Ooh. Yeah, maybe not my favorite. It's really, really mayonnaise -y. But I do like that tomato sauce. The fries and the fried chicken are delicious. So that lunch was fantastic, and those are some of the really typical dishes that you'll find at a lot of these comedores, eateries throughout this market. But there's more that we're gonna eat. Hello, hola, hola. There's definitely more that we're gonna eat. So we're gonna navigate our way through the market and find some other unique dishes that are served here. Oh man, so many food stalls. This tray? Okay. Oh. Oh, there's so much fried chicken. It's never ending fried chicken. Roberto, what is what are they famous for here? Oh, fried pork. Chuleta, okay, it's a fried pork cutlet, okay. Pork, they have two two different the the beef the the pork. Oh the beef and pork. So this place is famous for their fried chicken. Oh, that's kind of a dangerously close pan of boiling lava hot oil and fried chicken. Yes, uh, she's frying chicken, but they're also famous for their chuletas here. And that's like a fried cutlet of beef or pork. So we're going to get a mixture of both. Okay, muchas gracias. Pretty packed in here, um, pretty tight quarters, and it's there's not a lot of airflow in here, but you smell the aroma of all those fried meats, and so I got a whole, like a chuleta plate. Oh, even got another drumstick, a fried drumstick on this plate, but mainly came for the chuleta of beef and pork. There's some fried shrimp on it too, with rice, uh, with some of the more of that mayonnaise salad and a little bit of a lettuce salad. And then also Roberto said, they're also well known for their blue, blue corn tortillas here. I'll try the pork, the pork chuleta. I think is the one of their most famous things here. Oh, look at how moist that is. Yeah, the film here. Mmm. Oh, oh. oh wow. Oh, that is amazing. Oh man, that was like unexpectedly tasty and delicious, and it's so tender. I think. How do you say delicious in the your local Mayan? Dialect. Kelek. 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 Oh man. That is stunningly. And, uh, and what one is the name in uh, egg? Egg. Yeah. Okay. Chicken. Okay. Yeah. Wow. That all. And it's so tasty. Mm, okay. Okay, and then we also got the, the beef chuleta as well. Yeah. Mmm. Like deep fried beef. Excellent too. Oh man, so greasy and so much flavor. We got some fried shrimp. Mm -hmm. It's all pretty greasy, pretty crispy, and really tasty. Oh, he's 
Gracias. He just refilled my plate with some more, yeah. some more meats. Yeah. Oh, okay. What is this one, this Roberto? Chuleta. This is another chuleta. Okay. Yeah, chuleta. Oh, another piece of chuleta. This one is thicker and like more breaded almost. Right off the griddle. Let's try it. Yeah, that's really good. That I mean, that's straight up like a pork chop, deep fried pork chop. And then back to that kind of like nugget. Mm. Oh yeah, it is straight up like a, like a chicken nugget. Really crispy, but it has some good seasoning in it as well. Maybe some pepper in there. Okay. <laughs> oh man, I'm like dripping in sweat, even though it's not really that hot. I think it's just, there's not a lot of airflow back in this market, but man, that was some fried pork on the next level. That was so tasty. And then right here, you could see how important corn is. The different colors of corn. Oh, here's some of the purple corn. And the candles, are they for ceremonial? The Mayan ceremonial. Mayan, Mayan, Mayan ceremonial, ceremonial purposes, yeah, okay. for the Mayan calendar. Oh, okay. The, the doctor Mayan here, this coming here, I want to buy. You buy the copal, uh, sugar, copal, candle, liquor we want to give okay. in front of the church here okay we're taking a little break from the eating we're going to go see one of the iconic churches here and as uh well we'll learn more about it once we get there wow look at all these masks okay and we have just emerged from the market to the church of thomas Oh, this is beautiful. You emerge from the alleys, from the depths of the market into a courtyard and immediately it just kind of opens up into the church. Ladies selling flowers, the aroma of incense burning has this kind of like medicinal herbal aroma to it. Pablo, you were mentioning this is, this is also the, the site where it was, it is an ancient Mayan religious. Yeah religious place, right? Yeah, exactly. It used to be a Maya place. temple. Okay. Uh, the Spanish ordered a church to be built in Chichicastenango uh. because it was such an important place for the Maya. Mm. So the Maya did it. But what they also did is that they hide one of the most important books underneath the church. Uh. So they kept on praying to what they actually know instead of, you know, uh, a Christian God that came from overseas. They mm. mixed both and they added God to the to the mix, mm. but in the end, it's their own culture and their own way of praying that mm. they do. That's why there's so much incense because with the smoke of the incense, you send a message to, you know, to the sky. Mm. So that's a way when you pray, you have to have smoke for it to go up. Okay. That's something very, very Maya, very from the highlands actually. Okay. Yeah. And so this is still how it remains today. It is a uh, yes. It is truly Mayan. Yeah, religious beliefs, and yeah. yet it's it, mix, it looks it's a Catholic. Mix, it's a Catholic mix with Mayan religious. Like, if you go to the, if you bring the Pope here, he will not see this as a complete Catholic. Yep, yep. Oh man, it's really a, an overdose of sensory. Just so many things happening. So many people pass through this area. The aroma, the ceremonies, the colors. It's really, really beautiful. And, oh, I think we're gonna stop here for some fruit. Wow, what a stall. Okay. Gracias. So she's really friendly. She's selling, she has all this cut up fruit. And I got the, the mango cut up and with chamoy on top. Chamoy is kind of a pickled plum with, and it's salty, it has some chili in it. Mm. Mm. Very good. The mango is sweet. Great texture to it. And then you've got that salty, kind of pickled flavor that kind of just brings out the flavor of the mango. Adds an extra complexity to it. So no longer is the mango just sweet and a little bit sour, but it has that saltiness, has that chili. I love chamoy. This is really a great place to be, like right in the middle of the action. The colors, the vibrancy. And the history.
Just a five minute walk from the market is where you'll find a traditional Mayan cemetery. And so we're gonna go take a look at the cemetery and learn about its importance uh, because it's very unique and very, I mean, a huge part of the Mayan culture. But you gotta come down this hill and already in the distance, you can see the colors, the beautiful pastels. In the Mayan culture, death and also, I mean, a funerary ceremony graveyard, it has a totally different meaning than in Western culture. Would you say that, um, uh, Pablo? Yes, it, it is a little bit more, uh, we can say, it's still grieving, it's still the, the human aspects of losing someone, uh -huh, right? Uh -huh. But in a way, they try to celebrate it too. So mm. imagine a very special moment in Latin America, and I think in the world, you know, some call it Halloween, or we call them the Day of the Dead. Oh yeah. Uh, okay. That's the first of November. People come here crazy to to eat with their dead ones and to mm. like share moments with the dead ones and to fly kites. Mm. Because another way to send messages is through a rope and the sky. So they send uh, messages up, but they also send up smoke where they throw chocolates and candies and everything that the, you know, the, the people who are not here anymore will try in, this, in the heavens. Okay. So, and the colors are because this was the favorite color of the person when they died. Okay. So they ask okay. for this color to be painted when they die. Okay. Yeah. So what is this ceremony for? Is it to remember? For the day. So it Depending doesn't... on the day, you have a different ceremony because you have, there's, there's different powers that they Oh, uh, okay, okay. Uh, you will see there's also four crosses made of sugar. That is the four cardinal points, ah, right? Okay. So every okay. cardinal point has a special, special thing. They always point them out. Mm. And every color of the candle has also a special message. Mm. So the idea is to create uh, a fire to to this is to, to sort of understand the message that they're asking for. Okay, so, oh, and, and cacao is also very important. So this is chocolate that goes on, candles, cacao. Is this like a pine yeah. needles, pine yeah. needles gone? Yeah. Okay. We just witnessed one of the, the ceremonies, which they did a, I mean, uh, Pablo and uh, Roberto did a great job of explaining the cultural significance in the Mayan culture and just the respect that they have for their ancestors. Really fascinating, really interesting, and yet another glimpse into the, the Mayan culture. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Bye bye. How do you say thank you again? Veltiosh. Veltiosh, Veltiosh, okay. Veltiosh. Chichi Castenango, really a fascinating market and a cultural Mayan display of traditions where you can learn. Uh, it's so colorful, it's so vibrant. It's really a place to learn and a place that I highly recommended when you come to Guatemala. It's definitely worth it to come on a Sunday. And I think there's also possibly on a, another day of the week. It's open two days per week. Highly recommended. And also it was great to be with uh, Roberto, local Mayan from here. And he was able to show us around and really offer a perspective, a local perspective. And so I'd highly recommend it. Well, uh, I'd highly recommend also hiring a, a local guide also to support the community here. And thanks also to Pablo for being with us and also so to Ethnica Travel for arranging this entire tour for us here to Guatemala. We're traveling all around and eating some of the best food in Guatemala, so make sure you stay tuned and watch all of the videos in this series. But that's gonna be it. We are at the end of the market, and what a time it's been. And I wanna say a big thank you for watching this video. Please remember to give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Leave a comment below, I'd love to hear from you. And if you're not already subscribed, make sure you subscribe now for lots more food and travel videos. Goodbye from Chichi Castenango, and I will see you on the next video.